The business community is buzzing about ESG, whether it's to improve diversity or take on a more sustainably focused strategy. But do these screens go far enough in actually driving an impact? In part three of my three-part series on investments and ESG, I talked to Esther Wielden of S&P Global and the ESG Insider Podcast. We're at Unconventional Diner today. I'm Monica Trousey. This is Off the Menu. Hi, Esther. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining me. Hi, thanks for having me. You know, Esther, ESG has really gained all of this new momentum as we're seeing companies and industries really focusing more on being diverse, being inclusive, and also having more of a sustainability mindset. Where do you think some of the blind spots are, though, in these screens? Companies are always going to have blind spots to some extent when they're dealing with ESG issues because it's really all about um, adapting to changing social norms and expectations and, and the regulations as they evolve around those expectations. Part of what ESG is about is also doing an internal look at your policies, your practices, and, and unless you're really doing um, a true search of what you're planning as a company and how you handle things, then you're going to have more blind spots. And that's really kind of what ESG is all about. One of the things that really stands out to me is that um, there are some things that are included and also aren't included um, that that you think maybe would need to be, particularly on the E side. So for example, nuclear energy is the largest source of carbon-free uh, electricity in the country, but it is rated alongside in some of the screens to tobacco and pornography, coal, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I see that as, as something that maybe can be looked at and, and modified. When you look at ESG overall, do you think that there's an appetite to, um, to reconsider kind of this, what some think is the floor of, of what we should be doing on climate change? Utilities, especially the ones that have set like net zero emissions by 2050 targets, have really said that they know how to get to 80% of that. They know how to, they can use renewables, they can potentially use existing battery technology and things like that, and, and getting rid of coal plants um, to kind of get to 80% of their target. But they need technologies um, and big investments in R&D and in showing things can be scalable and aren't risky, or proven technologies, right? Um, they need things like potentially they have on the table, like nuclear, carbon capture and sequestration, hydrogen. And so I, I really think there's a difference between like maybe screens that are in funds that, that are kind of determined by those funds or determined by the investors. And there's also screens sort of through like the renewable portfolio standard that regulator set as what counts, right? That's not an ESG screen, but it kind of blocks out nuclear a lot of times. Are there any companies that you look at and you think, wow, that's bold. They're doing some really big, cool stuff. Um, I want to track them or, uh, you know, who kind of stands out to you? I was quite surprised um, when Southern and Duke both set net zero targets because they're, they're two of, of the biggest handful of utilities. And they both had quite a bit of um, high emissions portfolio. And we know that both of them are being pretty aggressive. They have net zero targets. They're looking to develop renewables. And so they definitely are moving. And even um, Duke has even started taking on like the environmental justice question. I saw that as sort of a mark of what's the right term? Um, the tipping point, I guess, when you start seeing the big, big ones making those kind of commitments that that I think is a big signal. When we've spoken before, one thing that's come up in our conversation is that ESG isn't neatly defined. Right? It doesn't have like a standard definition that you can look up and, and fully understand what it means or what qualifies. Is that a problem? I mean, corporations might think so because they would like to be able to have one set answer to, to you know, they have a, two dozen, a dozen to two dozen places that are asking them for different things and different to fill out for different forms. But there's been a lot of pressure for, for, the, for some standardization. And even the Securities and Exchange Commission has now said they're going to update their 2010 guidance on climate disclosures um, in financial reports. The metrics themselves and how you define ESG is really going to evolve over time. It's going to evolve 
on society, how society views things, how, I mean, imagine like even five years ago, a company talking about racial diversity, right? That, that topic was verboten, right? Like that was just dangerous direction to go in as a company. But now all of them, even in like all the conferences I attend, they're talking about how they're trying to help their, their employees feel more comfortable. They're investing in their communities. So there's a lot of things that change over time on how ESG is thought about and addressed. And I think if you define everything about it, you're going to miss something that's important. Um, and also technologies and other things evolve. And then I think there are also signals that we see, um, you know, BlackRock comes to mind when you have a very large, well-known company um, making a, a statement of significance that's kind of defining a new trend. Mm -hmm. um, how do you look at those moments in the the new cycle and um you know kind of where do you where do you plot them on your on your graph i think fink's letters in general over the last two years two to three years have been hugely instrumental in making people think about esg and, and the term that's kind of being used right now about stakeholder capitalism the responsibility of comp companies not just to their investors but to society to the people that use the products, to the places they operate in. And by being responsible to those areas, you help the economy and it comes back to help you. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you for your time. Great. Thank you for having me.